Oh, everyone, summer holiday is over, so we can start doing business again. Let me do the sound check. I think that you can hear me, right? Greetings, greetings, everyone. Excellent. So, after this summer holiday, we, we see that there is no much volatility in the markets, but still, we can do some business, we can make some pips, and that is why we are here. So today, guys, we are going to talk about a beginner's guide to Fibonacci and support and resistance levels. Also, I would like to say that Admiral Markets is supporting us, as always, and after my webinar, I will present you Mr. Mikhail, uh, whose job is to create a comfortable trading environment for you all, so you can hear him saying few words about platform. He will introduce some things to you. So let us start with Fibonacci and support and resistance levels. You know how big fan of Fibonacci I am. But still, have in mind that this is a beginner's guide. So if you want to uh, listen about advanced methods of Fibonacci and support and resistance, you can find up uploaded webinars. But still, even for guys who know a bit about Fibonacci, this can be a good thing to hear, as there is always something new to say. So, after, before we start, as always, risk disclosure statement, and by accepting this risk disclosure, we can continue. So, let us start with uh, a basics. So, who is Fibonacci? Introduction to Fibonacci numbers, Fibonacci retracements, then support and resistance levels. What are support and resistance? Why is it important to watch for support and resistance levels? And different examples of support and resistance indicators. I will give you an insight of good indicators, which I use and which I use in my intraday methods, so you can Google it. They are mostly free, but I will present you, of course. It, it's not hard to find it. So, let us start about good old Fibonacci. So, Leonardo Fibonacci was an Italian mathematician and he was considered by some the most talented Western mathematician of the Middle Ages. You probably know that, that uh, his sequence is well, fam well known and it's very famous. So, Fibonacci levels are a very powerful tool in trading Forex market. So, he developed and he found basically that golden ratio number 61.8. Uh, we won't talk about those little things that may uh, all life on our planet uh, in the golden ratio because as you already know we are interested in Forex and uh, Forex traders use Fibonacci sequence and Fibonacci numbers a plenty of time. So, just a few things that he uh, was in the year of uh, 9002 at the age of 32, he published what he had learned in Libra Bachi and he popularized Hindu Arabic numbers in Euro Europe. And those Hindu Arabic number in numerals or numbers in Europe are popularized by Fibonacci, if you didn't know that already. In the 19th century, a statue of Fibonacci was constructed and erected in Pisa in Italy and, of course, his numbers are widely used in trading stocks, commodities and especially Forex market. So, Fibonacci numbers are very easy to, to know and basically they are used extensively to calculate targets for entry points. Uh, I, okay, a little boost to the audio volume, if okay, let me see, uh, I think that, well, audio volume is working fine, maybe, maybe now is better, right, okay, if this is better, we'll continue, so, Fibonacci numbers are used extensively, as I said, to calculate targets, for entry points, exit points, for trades. Uh, Fibonacci numbers and levels are reliable as a large number of professional traders use them. 
And when uh, those kind of things happen, entry and exit points, traders in mass drive the prices to those levels. Fibonacci series of numbers are, as you can see, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8. It's pretty simple to calculate those sequence. As we add previous number to existing number, so we can have a sequence. To have 3, we had 1 and 2. To have 5, we had 2 and 3. So it's basically easy to understand. Uh, this is a little, little guide uh, how ratios are derived. As you can see, 13, 21, 34, 55. So golden ratio number, or 61.8, is divided by dividing 13 by 21, or 34 by 55. As you can see now on my screen, those numbers are also used in moving averages. So, if you, uh, many guys and many traders ask me, why do I use, for example, 13 and 21 moving average? Or why I use 34 and 55 from time to time? It's because those are Fibonacci numbers. And they represent a big thing in trading. Why? Because, as I already told you, traders in mass use those price levels to drive the price to or into. Those levels, those levels serve as a good dynamic support and resistance and magnet points. So those are magnetic points. 61.8, 31.2, 50. Those are key Fibonacci levels. So remember the, those levels, 38.2, 50, and 61.8. I also use 78.6 as deeper retracement. But some people on MetaTrader 4 use 76.4. As I told you, I am a fan of Fibonacci numbers, and I really use those levels. And my favorite number is 78.6 for deeper retracement. So, of course, another important ratios are 127 and 161.8. But if we go for retracement trading, which is from time to time a lot better than breakout trading, we can go, we can go for a good number of pips. So, buy setups with Fibonacci numbers include bullish candlesticks, and trend lines. That is called and that is known as a confluence. I will explain that methodology and I'm sure that we will have another basic candlestick patterns in future. So you will see what are basic candlestick patterns for bearish and bullish markets and you can always use that with Fibonacci numbers. Remember this, Fibonacci numbers are not solely traded. So we don't trade it blindly. It's very important to look for confluence with support and resistance levels and trend, trend lines. So, as always, watch for few signs, not just one. Fibonacci is very, very important in Forex trading. So pay attention again to 38.2, 50, 61.8 and finally 78.6 for trend trading or retracement trading. So I will show you what does it mean a little bit later. So how we use Fibonacci levels? With candlestick patterns on important Fibonacci levels, then we use it with support and resistance levels and trend lines, and those are called Fibonacci retracements, expansion, and convergence. So we can combine a multiple Fibonacci retracements, but we won't talk about it later because there is a sort of advanced Fibonacci trading. You can see it on our uploaded webinar. So always looks for, look for candlestick patterns 
always candlestick patterns on important Fibonacci levels and support and resistance levels and trend lines. And what does it mean? This is a trend, right guys? This is a trend. How do you know that it is a trend? Because we have higher high and we have a higher low. And then we connect this point A with point B and we get Fibonacci retracement. So here is, for example, level of Fibonacci retracement. If there is important candlestick pattern, we can use it to enter short. Or, or if there is a trend line, we can also use it to enter the short market. I will show you how to properly draw Fibonacci levels with your MetaTrader 4 platform. And that is the only one and only way. Always from left to right. I will show you that. So, again, if this is a trend and we have spotted a trend, we used to connect point A and point B in downtrend. And we will get those Fibonacci levels. This is very, very easy and there is a not a, how can I say, a do doctor science. It's not a space science. It's very, very easy to know. So, always from left to right, guys. Always from left to right. This is very important. I have seen many traders, even those full-time traders, that they don't know how to draw Fibonacci levels. They don't, they just don't know how to, to draw it. Always from left to right. If this is uptrend, as we can see, this is uptrend. We connect point A with point B. And then we will get those levels, 621.8, 38.2. You can add manually. 78.6 in MetaTrader 4 platform. You can edit. So, from left to right, you connect point A, that is a lowest low with highest high, that is point B. You connect those two points and you will get those levels. And then you have your Fibonacci on your chart. And you have it drawn it properly, not like many traders who draw it from right to left. That is not okay. Use those numbers for retracements. They are very accurate. Neglect 23 retracement, that is not important. Those are important numbers plus 78.6. 78.6. Point six is very important when we have deeper retracement. You see this point A in downtrend and point B in downtrend. This is first swing. If you want to enter a trade, you want to see the first swing formed, right? You always wait for the first swing to enter a retracement. So this is point A and this is point B. You connect from left to right, point A and point B, and you will get those levels, 31, 38.2, 50, and 61.8. Above that will be 78.6, 78.6, okay? Price in deeper retracements, price usually touches 78.6 and goes down. I don't say that it will always, of course, there is not a sure thing, but pay attention to this. Also, use candlestick patterns as I told you. So if you want to enter, don't enter blindly. If you have a good trend line here, you can enter because there is a confluence. If you use Bollinger Bands, for example, I will show you now. For example, your Bollinger Bands have expanded like this, right? And you have a confluence of Bollinger Band 
indicator and 61.8 Fibonacci. So there is a double confluence. So you can enter here, right? Or if you use stochastic indicator and you have your Fibonacci tool, you see the price hit this level and your stochastic went from above 80 to below 80. So there is another confluence, right? So you can use it to determine entry points, exit points, and of course dynamic levels of support and resistance. Candlestick patterns are very reliable near Fibonacci levels and other support and resistance lines. They are also good for signaling the end of the retracement. Of course, watch for this, I will tell you now, pay attention, double tops. What is a double top? If the price has made, for example, this, and after a few hours, it has made another candlestick at the top. So this is called double top. The same can be applied as double bottom. So double tops and double bottoms often appear at important Fibonacci levels around 61.8% and of course 100% just before a breakout. So watch out for double tops and double bottoms around 61.8 or sometimes they appear around 1.382 level on Fibonacci. But for retracement, this is crucial. Gold ratio number 61.8 and double top or double bottom. So pay attention to those levels. And always from left to right, of course. Oh, sorry. This is all. Let's. Okay, here is the example. Look at the price reaction, guys. In big, this is a good example how shallow retracement can work in a big, big uptrend. And a similar situation we had with cable. A few days ago, it went 30 300 pips. I will explain. I will answer to your, all of your questions later. So don't worry. So this also has happened on, on, on a cable. And this is another advice, guys. When you see a big, big, big move, retracement can be shallow. Especially if you hear news about corrections or interventions of central banks. You see, we had a sort of downtrend, right? This is a downtrend. This is one hour time frame and you can see the price is going down, down, down. This is another Fibonacci entry here. This is swing A. This is swing B. So you can you could have drawn Fibonacci from here to here. This will be around 56.1.8, and then the price went down. But after this, this how can I say this? This wasn't a big move, but it was good for intraday trading. We had a really big, big, big move. This can also happen after NFP, right? After NFP, as I told you, or if you maybe missed uh, mine and Chris webinar about NFP, NFP usually marks next few weeks trend. So probably if NFP numbers are bad, 
that will be a good for euro dollar or if NFP numbers are are good that will be a bad for euro dollar currency pair and that will probably extend to few weeks so let's see maybe this I, I'm not sure now but I think that this was NFP okay you see we had a big drop and this was a stop grabber right stop grabber so this is point A right and then we had a big 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 move to the upside one two three four five hours five hours and approximately 300 pips right so you see a double top here this is double top after the price has started paste at the third candle we can try because we it's, it's a common sense guys even after this second candle this is shooting star and we see the third candle cannot go above and the third candle went below the low of the second candle that is enough for you to start drawing a Fibonacci retracement why because it's a trend trade we want to go with the trend right we want to go with the trend so this is point A and this is point B here this is point B here and if I draw if I okay from here to here okay and we can see that 23.6 is here right where the price has jumped off 38.2 51.8 this was a shallow retracement because that was a big big move and that can happen of course after NFP after big news after central bank interventions pay attention to fundamental analysis then so we see we have a double bottom and we also see that we have some sort of spinning bottom spinning bottom candlestick pattern you see here there is some sort of spinning bottom you see stop candle and then you can enter here because you see it's 23.6 and that was a big big move so we can assume that there won't be so much retracement right and then you can see a big bullish engulfing candle after that so your entry could be here or your entry could be there either way you would have exploited a so-called retracement trade or a trend trade this is a trend this is a trend downtrend this is uptrend this is not a trend guys this is not a trend don't trade those kind of things right so after this initial move to 23.6 we have noticed a spinning candle spinning bottom candle some call it spinning top but spinning top is this and it's called and it, because it's very close to the tops I call it spinning bottom because it's basically the same candle but it appears at the support right this is support so so if you see that and you can you can assume that a good entry can be around that number so we have another push to the upside and after this we can see that the trend has been a little bit exhausted but still we are in uptrend why because we have this you see this is guys trend this is second swing so how can we exploit the second swing 
Here again, point A. Let me clear the screen for you. It will be easier to see. So this is, this was the first swing right here, 23.6. And that was a, a bottom. You see, the price went here, and this was the top. So this is point A. This is point B. So how can we start, when can we start drawing the Fibonacci tool, Fibonacci retracement tool? After we can see that this is a, indeed the top, even after this candlestick, we can start to, to draw a Fibonacci retracement. Okay, if it breaks, it breaks. But if it doesn't break, we assume that it will drop somewhere around 38.2, 50 and 61.8. Now we don't look for a confluence around 23.6 because the, the big move has already happened and this was a shallow retracement. Now we want to see some bigger retracement. So our preferable levels are 32.8, 50 and 61.8. This is a big, big retracement but since this is a big uptrend, we assume that this was that this will be somewhere around those three numbers. And remember this: 38.2, 50, 61.8 are the most con common numbers for retracements. Sometimes the move will go to 23.6 if this is a big, big, big move, and sometimes the move will go to 78.6 if there is a deeper correction. So usually after price breaks to this 61.8, it will test 78.6. But let's get back to this slide. After we connected point A with point B, we got our retracement. You see a hammer this candle is called a hammer. So we can assume after this candle has closed that the uptrend will continue so we can open a position around here. You see? You see how good this trend was? So this was point A and this was point B in our first swing. The first swing went to 23.6 where we have noticed a spinning bottom and a engulfing candle and then again after point A and point B after the swing has formed we wait for retracement. Retracement was around 50 percent and hammer. So this is a called a confluence. Candlestick pattern and 50% Fibonacci retracement together is called a confluence. So after this we could have entered and made a good number of pips. Also, look at this guys. Look at this. This is also point A and point B, right? And if I had drawn a Fibonacci tool from here to here I would have noticed 78.6 deeper retracement. And now you probably have seen that the retracements are getting deeper and deeper. So this can be a slight change of a trend later. When you see some deeper retracement, it can signal a potential continuation or a potential reversal. But either way, after 23.6, and after 50, we had 78.6 around here. Okay, after that move, this is very easy to spot. Look at this, point A, point B. And you can draw, you can draw this retracement from point A to point B, and you see, this is around 38.2 and 50 retracement here. And now the downtrend. 
You see the downtrend. Point A, point B, and entry around there. See? It's very easy, so you don't have to be a physicist or uh, Einstein to know these numbers. Another good example of Fibonacci in this screen, look at this. Point A, point B. Dry the Fibonacci to here and you will get around 50% here and then you see somewhere around there. The good thing is also to zoom into lower time frames. If you use one hour time frame you can zoom into 15 minutes time frame or 5 minute time frame to see a candle that will give you an earlier entry. So you don't have to wait for candle to close. So this is one hour time frame. I usually use one hour and four hour to drive Fibonacci tool, not lower. But then I zoom into lower time frame. It's 15 minutes or 5 minutes time frame and then I watch for candlesticks or trend lines to enter the market. So, in this particular example, you could have also, okay, you have drawn a Fibonacci tool, retracement, and then you have around this point when the candlestick started to touch this 23.6. You can zoom into 15 minute or 5 minute time frame and find a bullish candlestick that will bounce off 23.6 and you can enter a trade. You could, you, could, you could have done it also around here. When it touched 50 level, you could have zoomed into 15 or 5 minute time frame and find bullish candlestick that will give you a signal to enter a trade. So that this way your entry could be a little bit earlier, probably around 50. So you you couldn't you, you didn't wait for this candle, this camera to close. So that is a good example. And now I think that you you all know how to how to read Fibonacci and how to determine Fibonacci levels. Of course, I'm sure that now you know how to draw Fibonacci on your MetaTrader 4 platform. Okay, next slide here. This is a confluence of Fibonacci retracement and trend line within a triangle. So triangle, for those who don't know, is a chart pattern that usually describes a consolidation within a trend. That is consolidation. So this is a consolidation triangle and this is the upper trend line. Trend line is this red line which connects two or more peaks from top to the bottom in downtrend or from bottom to the top in uptrend. So this is called trend lines, trend line. This is a trend line and this is trend line. So when you connect those two trend lines, you get a triangle. This is vortex of the triangle. So it's a peak of the triangle of vortex of the triangle. Price will usually respect that before going up or going down. So in this particular example, I connected point A with point B. After this candlestick, I was sure that that won't go down because it's double bottom and this third candlestick, you see, 
it started to retrace around there. And after that, I used and drove Fibonacci tool from point A to point B. And then I have watched a behavior of candles around 38.250 and 61.8. This was a confluence, right? After this candle has closed, this candle has closed. See, it's sort of shooting star candle. I have drawn a trend line from point A to point B again. And I got a confluence of trend line and 61.8 Fibonacci. And that was enough for me to enter a short trade around there. See? Very, very easy to see. You just need a bit of screening time for this. So you see, this was also a breakout. So you, we could have added an entry here because this was breakout retest continuation. But let's concentrate on Fibonacci. So point A to point B after these candles has closed, we can see that this was indeed a bottom and this candlestick couldn't have penetrated this bottom. So we start when this candlestick closes, we can start start drawing Fibonacci. And we need to be patient. We need to wait for retracement. Always wait for retracement if you want a trend trade. If you want to scalp, it doesn't matter. If you want to trade breakouts, it doesn't matter. But it does matter if you want to trade with a trend. So wait for a retracement and then enter the market. See? Around there, and you see how the price went down. It was a really good trade. So, after this, I'm sure that you know a bit of for Fibonacci and a bit of Fibonacci, but as this webinar is supposed to give you cues about Fibonacci, we will talk about advanced methods later. You can see our webinar which has been uploaded. So let us move now to support and resistance levels. You see, probably when I, when I talked about Fibonacci, I commonly used and commonly spoke of support and resistance levels. Support and resistance levels represent important horizontal levels. So horizontal levels are this. If the price falls down, it falls to, to the support. If the price starts to rise, it rises towards resistance. So this is support and this is resistance. Support and resistance are called S R levels. And this term I usually use when I make my intraday analysis. Support and resistance. So support level is a price level where the price tends to find support as it is going down. A resistance level is the opposite. It's where the price tends to find resistance as it is going up. So we want to trade within support or within resistance. So if we want to go for a long trade, we want to trade around support or if we want to trade around to trade a short trade, we want to see a trade happening around resistance. It's best used with FIBO retracement confluence levels. So I showed you my earlier example. This was a trend line, and let's say that we have a pivot point around this level. So this is also a horizontal level of resistance and support, pivot point. Price technically follows those levels. 
So if you are a technical trader and you want to trade with a trend, you, uh, the, you know that the price will usually follow those levels. Price usually respects those levels when there is a thin volatility. For example, today, today really the price has respected uh, uh, Euro, for example, USD levels and cable levels. I don't know what current price of Euro USD is, but if you had read my analysis, which I posted on my blog, on Admiral Markets blog and on Admiral Markets Facebook page, you could have seen that I told you that the price, and I wrote, that the price will probably jump of 32.75. 32.75 is a big level of support on Euro USD pair. There is a big support, and you, if you have traded today around 31, 32, 75, you could have gained the 30 pips approximately, because the price was going down, 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 and then it came to 32.77 and went above 33.00. Basically, that happened because the price is undergoing a bit of correction in uptrend. So we are still in uptrend on higher time frames. So we want to see some good retracement. That retracement I calculated was 32.75. Many analysis, as I could see, foresaw that the price will jump of 33.15 and go above. But, you know, 32.75 was greater support than 33.15 and it was respected totally. And what does that mean? That means that 33.15, once it has been broken to the downside and retested, it became a resistant level. So if we trade 32.75 we would probably close the trade around 32.10 or 32.15. You see, 33.10 is now Euro USD. Now Euro USD is, is going to, to 33.15 because there is a resistance now. That is X support turned resistance. So, that is very important to understand. Now pay attention. Once this support, let's say it's 32.75, let's say for example for the sake of this webinar, once this support is broken, we want to see a retest of this retest and then down. That will mean that this support is now turned into resistance. That is also, and that has also been the case with 33.15 today. It's a resistance now. So every support and resistance level can turn into opposite. Every support can be turned into resistance and every resistance can be turned into support once it has been broken and retested. Remember that pivot points are also support and resistance levels. And those are horizontal levels of support and resistance. So, what are types of support and resistance levels? Manually drawn levels, which are my favorite. I, as you know, I, I calculated myself. I spot it on the screen and I draw it myself. Camarilla, we will, call, we will talk about Camarilla just a bit later. One of my favorite indicators for determining intraday support and resistance levels. Sorry, I need to take some water. 
Then, we use hourly pivot points for scalping. If you saw my increased webinar about scalping, we use hourly pivot points for scalping. Because if we trade five minute or a minute time frame, we need to see hourly pivot points. We are not interested in daily pivot points. Only in hourly pivot points. Marimet Fibonacci pivots 0, 0 and 50 levels and all historical pivot point indicator. Let's concentrate now about manually drawn levels and about Camarilla. What is Camarilla? I will show you on later screen. If the market opens between H3 and L3 levels, those are high and low levels. You must wait for price to approach either of those two levels. Whichever level it hits first, it gives us the first trade. If we want a short trade, we look for the price to bounce back down into H3 level before entering the trade. Stops are placed above H4 for short trades and below L4 for long trades. If the market opens outside H3 and L3, we should wait for the market to retreat back through L3 or H3 level as we trade within the trend. So this is one particular example. Price will usually open around here. Right? So, based on the trend, for example, it's downtrend. Based on the trend, we would wait for the price to first hit H3, then we would enter a short trade. Right? And we would have placed our stops just above H4. But if you see, that the price is going sideways. It's called the range. Then first we wait for the price to hit either L3 or H3 level to enter the trade. So the price will usually open between those levels. Watch it, watch it, uh, grab the Camarilla indicator. It's very easy to find it on the net. It's called Camarilla DT8. Camarilla DT8 indicator, it's free. DT8 indicator, it's free. You can Google it on internet and you can see it. So, after the candle has been opened around 12 GMT, it would usually open between H3 and L3. If we want to trade within the trend, we would wait for short entries for the price to approach H3 or if we want to trade within uh, a long trend, bullish trend, we want to see the price approaching L3 and then buy it. If we want to, if we see a range in market, then we wait either the price for hit H3 or L3, whichever comes first. So we would wait for, in ranging markets, we would wait for whichever comes first, L3 or H3. Yet again, if the price, where should we put stops? Stops should be put above H4 for short trades and below L4 for uh, long trades. And just three or four pips below or above those levels. If the price breaks L4, we would probably see a breakout to L5, which is a target. Also, you see, this, was, this level was broken, the price has closed. So this H3 has become support, and the price went and probably it went to H4. That is a breakout target of H4 level. Camarilla is very accurate and it can be very helpful if you use it along with Fibonacci numbers. So, use those levels, use those levels in combination 
read Fibonacci numbers. I think that my uh, companion is talking now, now, it's okay, we get the sound. So, always wait for H3 or L3, whichever comes first, and then trade it. H4 and L4 are just below or above that are stop entries, and if we go for breakout, wait the price to retest those, break those levels, and go for those targets. Don't be strict about it. If you want to see that it's very hard for the price to reach those levels, close it, or put stop to break even plus one, so you won't lose anything. And always try to exploit Fibonacci numbers with with those Camarilla levels. Also, manually drawn levels, which are my favorites. We need to watch for important touches. Touches are right in history and the future. I will show you that. Price tends to gravitate to those historical support and resistance levels. The more touches it has, the more important it is. It is best drawn on higher time frames. It, and I mean uh, uh, H4 and H1 time frame. It requires experience and it is my favorite way of drawing the levels. So those are levels I personally have drawn. So, you see, when I open the chart, I zoom out of this and I can see the important touches. I count those touches from right to left when I watch the screen. So if you want to see the history, always read the chart from the right to the left. If you want to see the history. So that is when you determine those levels. So one touch, two touches, three, four, five. You see why 3175 is important for Euro USD. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We have historical buyers and historical sellers around those levels. And I can see that this level is very, very important. Once I put this red level on my chart, it stays forever on my chart. Sometimes, when I see that the price is not respecting the level, I remove it but usually it stays always. You see? Those are all manually drawn levels. You see this, 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 this. You see how the, the price has respected this. And this is my favorite way of drawing those levels, but it requires experience. And those are all support and resistance levels. In this particular example, starting from here, this is resistance. It goes to support, it broke the support, it retested, and now this level, 31.75, has become a resistance. You see how the price went down to 30.42 and to 31.26. The price usually respects those levels a lot. In this example, see, it's a retest, then 3040 becomes a resistance after it broke as support. So manually drawn levels are also one of my favorite ways of drawing the price magnetic levels. So guys, as I told you, remember, always remember what I was talking about from left to right about Fibonacci, from historical, for historical price moves from right to left to see the screen, scroll it from right to left, and use it with conjunction with Camarilla and candlestick patterns. Always use it with Camarilla and candlestick patterns. If you have any questions, any questions, I will respond and then uh, my companion, Mikhail, will tell you just about some few things about platform.
So feel free to ask me anything if you want uh, what you, what you want about support and resistance and Fibonacci. So the first question is, what's the minimum time frame I use for Fibonacci? My minimum time frame is one hour, and I use it on one hour and four hour time frame. So it's one hour and four hour time frame. How do you treat the candle wicks in drawing? Always, I always use, always use candle wicks for drawing support and resistance and Fibonacci. For those guys who don't know what wicks are, those are wicks. This is weak, this is weak, this is weak, this is weak, this is weak. I always use wicks because wicks are important. And <laughs> wicks are more important in drawing Fibonacci and support and resistance than bodies. This is we are not interested in bodies. This is we don't this is action. And this is reaction, guys. This is action. This is reaction. This is ac this is action. And this is reaction. So remember this for now and forever. And this is the only truth you would ever hear. Candle wicks in drawing support and resistance in Fibonacci are of utmost importance. They are more important than bodies. When bodies start to form, that means that the trade has already started. There is action. And the earliest entry you could get is reaction, guys. The price reacts to those levels. So I treat candle wicks with very respect. So that, that was, if you have any further questions, feel free to ask me. If you don't have any questions, I will ask Mikhail to, to tell you a few things about forest market. So Mikhail, if you are here, let me find you on Skype. Mikhail, are you here? I don't know if he is here. I think that he will show just a Yes, button. hello, good afternoon. Hey, good afternoon, Mikhail. Yes, good afternoon, I can Mikhail. hear you. I can hear you. I think that everyone can hear you. Thank you so, very much for this beautiful presentation. Ah, uh, it was my pleasure. And good afternoon to all of you, my dear friends and my fellow traders. As Nuna has said, my name is Mikhail and I'm a client relationship manager at Admiral Markets. My job is to create the best possible trading environment for you. Now, here are my content details. If by the end of the webinar you still have some questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. I will be happy to help you. I'm really excited to speak with all of you today. Uh, all, of you do, all of you decided to participate in this webinar for one reason and one reason only. You are interested in trading. You want to understand the process better. You want to be a success. You're interested. You're intrigued. You want to become a Forex trader. Some of you are just interested. Some of you have experience with Forex. Some of you trade regularly and have a, their fair share of losing trades. And of course, winning trades. Obviously, all of you want to be like this guy rather than the previous guy. Both of them have a good suit on and a fancy watch, but only this guy looks happy. He has closed a great trade and he's tasting victory. I bet it tastes good. And I bet all of you want to taste it every day, every hour, and every minute. This is why you're here today, to get better to get ahead, to be just like this guy. But what do you do to get there? Forex is not a walk in the park. To be successful in forex trading, you must be able to swim with the sharks. And swimming with the sharks is one hell of a job. A job that requires courage, strength, and of course, 
plenty of training. So how do you train for a job like that without getting eaten? Well, that's how. You get yourself in a position where you get a first-hand experience with no risk. This experience has a name. The name is Admiral Markets Demo Account. Training Forex requires a lot of practice. You must be familiar with the market and you must be familiar with the platform you will be using. Admiral Demo offers you MetaTrader, the most popular trading software in the world. It is the most popular for a reason. It is the best and it offers tons of features for both forex rookies and professionals. It will be your wings. It will be your path to victory. But I mention wings because in a way becoming a trader is like becoming a pilot. You must be able to make decisions fast and your decisions must be correct. The pilot is responsible for the passengers. You will be responsible for your money. You are now a pilot of your own forex career. Before a pilot is allowed to fly, he spends hours training on a flight simulator. They get familiar with the features of the aircraft. They put themselves through a variety of different scenarios, so when the pilot flies a plane, they can make an instant decision, and it, this decision has to be correct. A simulator like this costs a lot of money. You get yours for free. It takes less than a minute to register for an Admiral demo. We get to test yourself in real market conditions for free, for as long as you want, with absolutely no risk. You have learned new things today. Nav has taught you plenty, and he was a very good presenter. Now this is a time to go on the Admiral Markets website, register for a demo account, and put everything you've learned into practice. You can trade currency pairs. CFDs on commodities and equities. Our spread, in fact, is so small that if I did not tell you about it just right now, you wouldn't know it was there. It is only one pip on all major pairs. One pip. Admiral Demo will get you a chance to see for yourself. Go to AdmiralMarkets.com, get a demo account, do what you need to do to become a forex trader. Train hard and become a success. Now, if you have any questions, I'm available right now, or you can phone me, email me, or Skype me. I'll be very thrilled to help you out. Now, if you have any questions, I'll be available through all means of social media, so don't hesitate to contact me, and I'll make sure that you have the best trading environment available for you with Admiral Markets. Okay guys, I guess that all we decided to take your questions to email or phone or Skype. It's been a pleasure speaking to all of you today. I hope you have a great week, plenty of luck in trading, and of course remember, your luck is your success and it's something you work hard for. Goodbye.